Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. This I believe is episode 81 and I'm going to chat all about the things that I've been knitting on over the past month and what I've completed. I am the dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns. You can find my hand dyed yarns at loftyloopsyarns.com. Link is in the description. If you want to follow me on social media, you can find all of those links in the description as well. Also check out the Discord server if that's something that you're into because we have lots of fun over there. We chat about what we're working on, um, maybe our stash enhancement stuff, non-crafty conversations. We talk about books we're reading, puzzles we're working on. There's all sorts of fun stuff chatter going on in those. So definitely check them out if that's something that you're into. We just completed the Slay All Day Wrap Knit Along, the Slay All Day Cal. We just completed that and so winners were notified in the Discord servers or in the Discord server. So if that was something that you were participating in, go ahead on over there to check to see if you won and email me your information. But that was really fun. It was awesome to see everyone's different iterations of that wrap pattern from last, no, it was the beginning of this year. So yeah, almost six months ago. Goodness, time has flown. It is the beginning of May. I cannot believe we're already at the beginning of May. School is ending in just a few weeks and we are in the crazy whirlwind that is leading up to the end of school. But very much looking forward to summer and having some outdoor time and all of those things. We're not here to chat about weather. We're here to chat about knitting and the things that I've been working on. So I do have three works in progress things on the needles to share with you and two finishes. I've been pretty monogamous this past month if I'm being completely honest. The things that I've cast on have just stolen my heart and I have given them all of my attention. And so it might be a shorter episode, but that's okay. Sometimes that happens. And I'm feeling really good about the things that are on my needles. I also have two finishes, like I mentioned. You will have seen them as half finished objects in the last episode, but I did manage to get that second sock finished. So I'll show you the full completed pair. So let's just dive right in. And the first completed sock pair, I'm just gonna put them on my blockers here. The first completed pair is my Gatsby socks. This was the colorway from my January's Antihero Mystery Club. And I really love how this worked up. It's coming across a little muted on camera, it looks like. I'll see if I can correct that during post. But they are really, there we go. There's some of that orange picking up grays and blues they're really really fun and i'm honestly was really shocked once i started seeing how these worked up because i wasn't in love with them in the dye pots if i'm being completely honest but then i knit them up and here we are so i've got a full completed pair i knit these vanilla socks using my favorite vanilla socks pattern um, which you can find on my website or on ravelry and two by two rib, slip stitch, heel flap and gusset, and then a wedge toe. These I knit on a US size two, which is a little bit larger than I usually use. I'm, I tend to go for a US 1.5. Um, and because of that, they're just a smidgen loose on me um, because I followed my same counts and all of that. So gauge is just a smidgen bigger and so they're a smidgen loose and so these are likely going to go in my gift pile or I'll see if my son wants them or maybe my husband finally wants a pair of socks. He seems to kind of roll his eyes and act like he doesn't care about hand knit socks but then again he's never put them on his feet so but he does build decks and so he's like, these would be an indoor in the house only pair of socks. Like do not wear these to work because I will not be mending the holes that you inevitably get two weeks in. Um, but yeah. So these are the Gatsby socks. Unfortunately, this colorway is no longer available, but there is potential for it to come back around in a pre-order later in the year. So stick around if that might be something that you like to get your hands on. I think it'd make a gorgeous sweater. Like, I don't know, I think the color, I have a picture on my Instagram feed and I'm wearing them with blue jeans. And I think that color with the blue jeans is just, oof, it's so good. 
The second pair of socks I have completed are my Lestat socks. These were the February Antihero Club colorway. Much different than January's Gatsby, but I've been having a lot of fun finding different images to create mood boards with once I decide on who my antihero for the month is. And then I'm creating these mood boards and sharing those. And so you can really see where I'm getting my color inspiration from. And I loved the Lestat mood board. And I'm really happy with how that translated into the yarn. Um, and I do kind of, I mean, it does pool a little bit in stripes, as you can see, but I really kind of like that effect. So we've got like these purple, gray, red, purple, gray, red. I think that's super cool. And these, just like the Gatsby socks, I did not use the contrast color. I just continued knitting vanilla until I did my slip stitch heel flap and gusset and then continued in stock knit until I did my wedge toe. These I did knit on a US 1.5, I believe, and double check that information. But these fit much better, so I will be keeping these, most likely. Yes, so these were knit on a US 1.5. I've been really into circular sock needles or the nine inch circulars lately. I used to always use DPNs because I could just fly with DPNs. Magic Loop just frustrated me and it was too fiddly for me to like constantly be pulling the needle, whatever, as you turn. Um, but those nine inch circulars, for whatever reason, they would always kind of hurt my hand and I'd get cramped up and it just, I don't know. But for lack of having other available needles to cast these socks on with, I went with a nine inch circular. And when I tell you that they flew off the needles, I can't even, I'm not lying, they flew. So for some reason, these nine inch circulars have been my sweet spot lately and I've only been using them. Um, I do switch to DPNs to do my toe decreases, but everything else is knit on the nine inch circular, including the heel flap and gusset. And I know Crazy Sock Lady, um, if you check out her channel, she has some really great tutorials she's added for knitting top down socks with a nine inch circ and then going through the heel flap and gusset and doing all the things. So you don't need to transfer your stitches from one needle to the next. Because I was, when I first started, I was like, there's no way I can get this heel flap and gusset on a nine inch circular. Like that seems really weird. But honestly, once you do it, it makes total sense and it's super simple. But yeah, I think the Gatsby socks, I knit Magic Loop on my US twos, which not a fan and it was the wrong needle size, and so my gauge was all wonky. But this was really when I hit my stride, hit the sweet spot, and I'm really happy with them. Um, I do 20 rounds for the cuff, usually 40 to 50 for the leg, depending on how long I'm feeling like I want the leg of my sock. And then usually once I complete the gusset, so you do the heel flap, and then you pick up your stitches, and you can see here where you're decreasing back down to get to your original count, once I do that, I do about 40 more and that gets to, that's about my perfect foot size um, before I start doing my toe decreases. And I wear a US nine and a half to 10 in women. So my feet are larger and I do have wider feet. But yeah, this is a large sock blocker. So you can see here, I mean, they're, they're pretty snug. Uh, they got some wiggle room on the blocker, but Unfortunately for me and the rest of my family, we all have very large feet. And so knitting socks for myself or any of them is a test in patience for sure, which is part of the reason I've never knit my husband's socks. And I've only just knit my son one or two pair. Um, he is 19 and he wears a size US men's 14. <laughs> so... If I'm feeling generous, um, and my husband's in about a 13, 13 and a half, so he's right behind him. Big feet family here. That is all I have for finished objects. Um, I was hoping to have my Radvent square for the April Club finish so I could share that, but I haven't even started it because I did cast on for the sock and have just been working away like mad on that. Um, so this will be a spoiler for the April Club. I've already spoiled it on Instagram. But April's anti-hero was Paris, Prince of Troy. And he was a slightly controversial anti-hero. Some could almost 
argue that he was a villain but honestly the choices although they were stupid the choices he made he did it for reasons that were true to himself like he fell in love with Helen and so yeah just steal her I guess and cart her across the Angean Sea and start a war because of it but his motives to himself were kind of pure while looking you know anyone else is like really Paris really anyway not gonna get into it I love Greek mythology I love the movie Troy with Orlando Bloom and Brad Pitt and Eric. Oh, I forget his last name. The guy who plays Hector. But anyway, it's filled with a phenomenal cast. I love that movie. Um, I love the Iliad. I love, I just love Greek mythology. So Paris was the inspiration and I'll share the mood board for that. And that was really fun to die up. If you want some behind the scenes footage, you can head on over to Patreon because I did share it over there. I also have a reel on Instagram if you're curious, but it turned out very, very beachy, a lot beachier than I was intending it to be, but it kind of works out because like I said, Paris carts Helen across the sea. And then a lot of the battle of Troy takes place on the beach. And so, Kind of looks like water waves we've got some sandy looking browns in there it all works out the really bright pops of aqua or kind of that bright tealy blue i took from the patina on the helmet in the picture which i really like how that turned out and then here is the sock and i'm working my way through the foot and it is also pooling but like i said i kind of really like it i don't I've never been a big fan of pooling, but I think it works in these socks that I'm doing. I really kind of think it's cool. So I love that we've got the tans and the blues of the water and then the tans again. I mean, it wasn't originally water, but that's how I'm reinterpreting it now. <laughs> so I've just finished my gusset stitches and you can see there once I finish the gusset, I stick one of those light bulb stitch markers in at that last round once I've gotten back down to my original cast on number and so from here is where I start counting until I get to 40 and then I'll start my toe. Um, but I mark every 10 rounds. I picked up that little tip from Kay the crazy sock lady and it just super helps keep track of where I'm at. I did use the contrasting color for the heel and I will use it again for the toe. It's just this really nice sandy brown that I really like. And so again, these are on my nine inch circulars. They're zooming and I knit the majority of the leg. Actually, we last weekend we went to see Dungeons and Dragons and I had cast on the cuff, the cuff I had finished before we got to the movie. And then I think I did about 30 rounds of the leg in the movie. And so that was always a plus when you can walk out of a movie having seen a really awesome movie and then also having, you know, a leg almost complete. So I've got my stitch marker from A Needle Runs Through It. Let me see if it'll pick that up. But I picked up a set of her Schitt's Creek stitch markers and I've been using them almost exclusively but we've got a little Moira there with the baby so I switched it from my e-glass one that I've <laughs> been using <laughs> I'm like we'll switch it up yeah so there is my Paris Prince of Troy sock and I imagine that that will be complete either today or tomorrow definitely by the end of the weekend which is really exciting and then I'm going to cast on my Radvent square that is a pattern by Amber O'Brien. I have a goal to knit all of my club colorways up as a pair of socks as well as a Radvent square. So then at the end of the year, I'll have 12, hopefully that I can join all together and have my club as a Radvent blanket, which would be super cool. So, so far I'm keeping up pretty well. I will say with April being over, I'm a little bit behind. I would have normally had that April Radvent Square done by now, but that's okay. I can whip those up usually in a day. Um, I talk about it more in depth a couple videos back, I think. So if you're curious about that, um, go check that out. I also found some YouTube videos that were super helpful with the cast on because I was struggling for a little while. 
um, I think it was the last podcast episode. So go check out episode 80 if you want more information about the Radvent throw and some help with how to cast on, how to manage it, what needles work best for me, things like that, because it is a little bit fiddly, but once you get it, it's so worth it because these squares are just so pretty. The next work in progress I'm going to share is a new cast on, I believe, from the last podcast. I cast this on not too long ago. It is living in this bag that I got from the Fiber Fox, and it's just got these gorgeous little moths on it, and it's a good sized bag. It's been in my rotation, well, since I put away all of my holiday bags, I think. And last podcast episode, I was wearing my sea glass Racerback Tank, that is a pattern by Megan Reagan or Bad Wolf Girl Studios, Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits here on YouTube. And I was talking about wanting to cast on a new summer top. And I had a couple skeins, one-off random, one-of-a-kind skeins from Treehouse Knits, uh, Lauren over there. And I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with them, what they'd become. And I started looking through my queue of summer cast-ons and the one I really wanted to do took three skeins. So I was like, okay, well that's going to push it. But then I remembered how much I enjoyed wearing that sea glass racer back and how comfortable it was and that the best part was that I got that entire tank done in under two skeins of fingering weight yarn. So a light bulb clicked on and I was like, this is what we're doing. It's happening. And so I grabbed my two skeins from Treehouse Knits and caked them up. So here they are. And I am alternating these skeins because it is a really variegated, speckled, hand-dyed yarn. It's always, well, even with tonal yarn, to be honest, it's always a good idea to alternate your skeins with hand-dyed yarn. A couple reasons. One of them being if you don't like pooling, like my socks are pooling, it helps combat that. So you kind of, you minimize the amount of pooling that could potentially happen if it's going to happen. The other reason being that us indie dyers, we can't, we're not commercial dyers. We don't have large machines hooked up to numerous amounts of tech and all of these things to make sure every single batch comes out exactly the same. And even with commercial dyes, I'm pretty sure batch to batch, they have differences. I mean, there's just no way to replicate exactly with yarn. It just, it doesn't happen. And indie dyers, especially myself, I always make sure that people are aware of that up front. Um, if you order from a shop update, for example, and you grab a couple skeins, and then maybe you want a couple more six months down the line, if I have to re-dye those, Likely they're going to be cousins, possibly sisters, but never twins. Like it just isn't going to be a thing. These I'm fairly certain came out of the same batch, but just to be sure I'm alternating. Um, there can be times where maybe like, let's say the base, the gray base here is slightly lighter. And so if I were to knit one whole section with this and then switch to this cake, with a little bit darker base, you would very clearly see a line separating where that new skein was joined. So alternating, again, blends those two together just in the event that there are slight variations between batches or skeins. So, okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox and I'll just show you what I'm working with. I am working <clears throat> in the body and I think I have to get to like 80 rounds or something like that. So I've got like 50 more to go, so it's just, round and round and stocking it right now. And because I'm alternating, I've got yarn bits hanging everywhere. But here is my top so far. And it is on smaller, a smaller cable, so it's kind of bunching up here down towards the bottom, but you get the idea. So with this top, you cast on the back panel and you work it back and forth in stockinette. And then you put your stitches on hold and you come back up and you join to work one of the straps around to the front. And then you put those on hold and you come back and you join the other side of the back panel and then work down the front until you get to a point where you can join the underarms and then start working in the round. And so that is where we are at now. And I just think this color is so pretty. I hope it's been focusing and picking up properly. I love the speckles. I love the variegation. Um, 
I was slightly concerned that when I showed it on camera, sometimes the camera will pick up pooling more than the eye can, but it looks really, really good. Um, Lauren is a magician and her colorways are always gorgeous and amazing. Super pretty. And I've honestly <laughs> been plowing through Riverdale, um, which I've never watched before, but I needed another season or series to binge on Netflix. And so Riverdale was suggested. And while it is so cheesy and I kind of roll my eyes at it a whole lot, I'm still getting sucked into the storylines. And so this has been my Riverdale knitting, <laughs> which is perfect because very shortly I'll be getting more yarn in from Lauren from her Riverdale collection that she had. And I ordered those skeins without having watched the show at all. So uh, I just ordered based off the colorways that I loved. And I will say that I got a sweaters quantity of Southside Serpents. And now having watched the first few, I think I'm like two or three seasons in now, I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, I am team Jughead. So I'm also probably 20 years too old for that show, but here we are. Um, yeah, so I really like this. Not a lot more to say about it other than I am just going to be knitting stockinette in the round forever. And then there is some lace towards the bottom portion. I'm still undecided if I'm going to make this one a bit more cropped than the last or possibly even omitting the lace at the bottom. Um, and just kind of winging it until doing my own bind off. I don't know. I might do it without the lace. We'll see. I'll probably make up my mind five different times before actually getting to that point. So we'll see what happens and I will most definitely be sharing it with you as I go. The last work in progress I have to share is a, it was going to remain a secret project, but I'm going to go ahead and share it anyway. I decided that I love my sleigh all day wrap so much. And this might just be like, someone please tell me if I'm just being extra because this is my first real non sock design. So I'm slightly obsessed with it. It's kind of like my baby, but I love it so much that I wanted to translate it into a cowl that you knit in the round. And the reasoning behind this is one of my favorite things to throw on in the cold weather is my festive cheer cowl. And that was something I knit a couple years ago. It's a pattern by Yarnia Designs. Basically you cast on, on circular needles, you join it in the round, and then you knit stockinette, switching your colors as you go through. And so at the very end, you have this very long tube that you then Kitchener all of the ends together and so you get this infinity cowl that is also a tube so it's double thick and I wrap that sucker around myself twice at least and it's my favorite scarf my favorite thing to throw on in cold weather over my coat it's just I love it and so I wanted to see if I could translate my slay all day wrap into that kind of idea where you would cast on join in the round and then start working your sections of brioche and lace throughout. And then at the end, we're gonna end up kitchenering it, all of it together. And so you will have this double thick, really fun cowl. That's, that's my plan. I did have to kill a project in order to cast this on. Um, I'm sad to say I'm frogging my baited breath shawl. I know, gas. While I, I love the shawl, I love the design and I love the yarn, it was just slow going for me and I really wasn't clicking with it. I think I wanna try it again, but possibly maybe the DK version. I don't know. I do, I will go back and do another baited breath. I do wanna finish it. It just wasn't clicking for me and I kept finding myself throwing it to the side and not really working on it. So I repurposed the yarn from my Fiber Fox advent last year, which is what I was knitting my baited breath in. And it is now going into my sleigh all day cowl. I'm starting from the other side of the fade. So I haven't technically frogged the yarn out of my baited breath where I started with day one. I'm just instead starting with day 24 and working my way back. And then once I get down to the point where I need that the first three days worth of colors, then I'll frog it and put it in uh, my cowl. So we started at this end with the golds and browns and we're transitioning into reds. And now I'm finally getting to purples, which is so exciting. Um, there is a provisional cast on, so you can see 
that's what that gray is. That is eventually where I will put needles back in so I can kitchener. But, and this is upside down, technically the pattern goes like this, um, but for the sake of what we're looking at, you can see the lace there is the same lace, it's unblocked so I'm sorry it looks a little wonky. Same lace from first section of my Slay All Day wrap and then it goes into a single color brioche. And then you've got a garter split, the second section of lace, some more brioche, a slip sit, stit, bleh, slipped stitch section, another brioche, and then we start the process over again, those six sections. So that's what I have here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, and then I'm in the second fifth day, technically, if this were an advent calendar project. I am having so much fun. It is in testing. It's currently with testers right now. I love that, you, I mean, this, oh, it's gonna be so squishy and great once you wrap it around yourself. I'm also including, okay, so let me back up. It's currently in testing right now. I am writing it to use 24 20 gram minis or a 20 gram advent calendar. However, I'm also including a short version if you have 10 gram minis or if you have at least 10 grams of scraps that you wanna make this into a scrappy project. Each section for me, I'm doing the long version. Each section is still taking about 12 to 16 grams depending. The one color brioche takes more, obviously, because you're almost double knitting some of those stitches. Um, if you were to follow the two color brioche option, which is included in the pattern, you will obviously use less of your main color as you'll be splitting it with that contrast color. But these are uh, the Fiber Foxes single ply base. I can't remember what the base is actually called, but it's just 100% superwash merino and it is a single ply. So it does, it looks a little funny until it blocks out. Um, but I think it's going to be so good. Like, Look how squishy that brioche is. Oh, there you can really see that pattern. Yeah, I'm having a blast working through this. I'm trying to think the other variations my testers are trying. So we've got the full size 20 gram mini, we've got the short size 10 gram mini. Someone else is also using a contrast color for the garter sections in between. So that is something that you could always do. I don't know, I think that I think we're gonna have a really good variety of what you could do with this um, in the project pages once the test is complete and before it is released. Um, you can also add some fluff to this if you'd like. You can use full size skeins. Maybe you have six different colors and we'll just, you know, repeat through those six colors. Maybe you have four colors, maybe you have two colors, whatever the case may be. I mean, in the end, you're gonna have 24 sections. So however you want to divvy that up, that's entirely up to you. It could be all one color, um, but of course I will have all of the yardage needed and everything will be listed on the pattern once that is released. Um, here is what I have left of this latest section. And then we're going to be jumping into this really deep purple, which I am super excited about. Oof, I love purples. And then I've got the next one after that caked up. So this is a little bit lighter of a purple. And I believe we're gonna start transitioning into like starting to get blue, I think, and then eventually green. So yeah, very excited for this. My goal uh, is to have the pattern released in August. And so that is plenty of time if people wanna prepare for Advent season, um, whatever the case may be, but I'm giving my testers through the end of July to get everything finished and updated and then oh, August release. So keep your eye out on social media for that. 
sign up for the email newsletter if you want to get email notified when that happens. Um, but I will most definitely be vocal about this <laughs> up until that point and probably a lot of after. Um, one other thing to mention, I am knitting mine on a US 6. I like the gauge that I get with lace on a fingering weight with a US 6. It's kind of my go-to. I do have gauge suggestions in the pattern, but again, it's entirely up to you. You don't have to meet gauge exactly. Like, you'll be fine if you don't um, because it is a cowl and it's going to just the nature of it. It's not a sweater. It'll fit, I promise. I've got just a few stash acquisitions that came in very recently. Again, I've ordered some from some pre-order collections, so I've got lots in the works that are that'll be coming in, trickling out through spring and into summer, which I'm really looking forward to. I like the idea of ordering from collections like that that have a longer turnaround. I feel like I said the exact opposite last time. Um, but I used to be a person that liked, and I still do, that instant gratification. I want to order from a ready to ship update and get my stuff in three days. I want that. Um, but also I'm kind of shifting a bit into how I'm working on my projects and being more intentional with the yarn that I'm buying, knowing that it's going to be going into a very specific project. And then when it comes in, being able to work through that project before getting in the next sweater quantity or whatever. And so now I'm not feeling so overwhelmed. This is in this moment. Mind you, it'll likely change because this is who I am. And surprisingly, cast on itis has been kept at bay over the last month, but that does not mean it's going to remain that way. Especially when I get really cute things in like this, and then I'm like, I have to cast on, I wanna cast on. Uh, but I grabbed a 50 gram sock set from Tiny Human Knits, who is Laura up in Canada. And this is her Carols in the Snow colorway. And I saw she posted this um, on her Instagram. It was a winter color, uh, holiday color, but she was bringing it back. And I loved, loved, loved the colors in her finished sock and how they all look together. And so I grabbed 50 grams to knit myself a pair of socks. And it came with this 20 gram contrast mini. Um, it is, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, two-ply twist. And so it's the same as my sock base. It's what I'm used to. I'm really excited to cast these on. So that came in. I also received the last, I think, of my Patreon minis from a homespun house. I still subscribe to Molly's Patreon. Um, I just downgraded it a little bit. I still watch all of her content and I love all of her content, but I don't necessarily need minis from her. As much as I still want them, I don't need them. And so I downgraded. So I think this will be the last of the minis I get from Molly. Um, but these are the March Patreon minis and it's Biscuit, Lavender Haze, and Farmer's Market. And they're just 10 gram minis. And they're 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. And so these will just go into a scrappy project. I think they're so pretty. I love this palette. I ordered from a new to me dyers. Um, well, fairly new to me. I've been following her now for a while, but I haven't had any of her yarn. Um, but I ordered from her pre-order collection. And this was the Just Desserts collection from Silly Goose Yarns. She is not too far from me, so that's exciting. But yeah, she's Silly Goose Yarns over on Instagram and all of her colorways were based on desserts. So there were pies and cake and all sorts of yummy stuff. I received this sticker with her logo. That is her sweet puppy. Oh, so cute. But yeah, I ordered three skeins of her cashmere DK base and then a sock set. And so I grabbed green apples on cashmere DK. It's this really pretty bright Granny Smith green with some speckles of browns and yellows in there. It looks exactly like a Granny Smith apple. Look at those speckles. And then I got to this pie crust colorway. Just gorgeous golden yellow. And these two together are awesome. Look at that. It's like apple pie. Mm. 
And then I also got this chocolate covered cherries colorway that I thought would make a really fun hat for Husker season. And so while I'm not a huge football fan, I mean to live in Nebraska is to be a Husker fan even though it's been a little questionable for our football team lately. Um, but our volleyball team is phenomenal. <laughs> So yeah, I thought that that, even though it's like browns and reds, I still think that it'll be a really fun like winter, fall Husker hat. So that is my plan for that. And then I also grabbed the chocolate covered cherries on a sock set with this bright red mini skein. And this is her two ply superwash merino 8020 base. So yeah, that'll be fun socks at some point too. Maybe I'll have a matching socks to go with my hat and then maybe our football team will win a game one can hope that is all i've received in the mail as far as yarn goes and so super happy with what i have i don't know for sure what a couple of those will become yet they'll just go in stash and then i have some loose plans for some of the others and i'm hoping to continue working through my sleigh all day cowl i want to finish my top hopefully in the next podcast I can wear it that would be really fun and I have some other things that I would I'm dying to cast on but I need to finish some things first as far as shop news goes if you're interested in that I do have a lot of skeins that are in the shop currently ready to ship the May club is now open that'll remain open for probably another week to two weeks before I dye those up and ship those out May's anti-hero is The Bride from Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. And so I'm completely going out of my comfort zone and dyeing up some bright yellow. And I'm honestly kind of excited about it. I'm ready to stretch my wings and get out of my safety net of blue and purple. <laughs> um, so yeah, that'll be a fun one for sure to dye up. And you can go see the mood board on Instagram or in the shop if that's something you're interested in. My second round of advent calendars will be opening up in June. This might be the last round since they sold so well the first time. I'm really trying to cap myself because I'm terrified to have a mini shortage from my supplier, especially with the new bases that I'm offering. So I'm playing it really safe right now. If you've got your heart set on an advent calendar, make sure you sign up for the email newsletter because that is the for sure way you will get notified with plenty of time in advance to prepare for that. Ooh, I have a new collection that's going to be launching in June. I'm not saying quite yet what it is. Um, it's in development. I've got about four or five colorways dyed already. I love them. And I will say, if you are a lover of bright neons, you're definitely gonna wanna check this collection out. I just needed something bright, poppy, fun just to have a massive play in the dye pots and get that mojo back and holy moly this is doing it for sure um, maybe in the next podcast episode I'll share that collection and show off all of the yarns but not quite ready to announce it just yet but oof it's gonna be bright and it's gonna be good I'm so excited for it it's also one of my massive guilty pleasures that it's inspired by, which makes it even more fun. Yeah, if you like to see behind the scenes footage of running a small business, being a yarn dyer, if you want in on the secret of the next collection, I'm pretty sure I shared it on Patreon. If not, they'll definitely be the first to know before anyone else. That's your bag. You can definitely check that out, no pressure. Um, I've got a few different tiers over there and the one that you would want to see all the behind the scenes footage is going to be the Loop Troop or the Loop Troop Lite. Uh, those tiers get the behind the scenes videos and things like that. I'm also playing around with the idea of releasing collections about 24 hours early so patrons can go in and shop first um, before anyone else and I'm also considering opening up the second round of advent calendars to patrons for a full 24 to 48 hours before opening it to the general public, just because I feel like I owe them that, they've been supporting me. Um, I definitely wanna go out of my way to give them a little bit of special treatment because love y'all. So check that out if that's, again, something you're interested in. I was really hoping that we were gonna hit a milestone here on YouTube because we're so close. I think we're two or three subs away from that milestone. So I was hoping to be able to announce a giveaway this episode, but alas, 
I can't do it yet. I can't prematurely do giveaways. So once that happens, we will absolutely be having a party here and giving some stuff away. I think that's all I've got for you. I feel like I said that this was gonna be a shorter episode. I hope it was a little bit shorter. Yeah, I've only got three, three projects I'm working on, but that's a really happy place for me right now. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your week. I hope if you went to Maryland Sheep and Wool this past weekend, which technically is today, it's Saturday, um, but if you went to Maryland Sheep and Wool once you're watching this, I hope it was fun. Um, super jealous. I do think, I think, this isn't set in stone, but I think I'm gonna be going down to DFW as a shopper, not a vendor this year and I'm super excited for that. I think I'm gonna make the road trip down to Texas. Um, that'll be really fun, but I haven't been to a fiber show since pre-COVID, since pre-Rona when I went to VKL in New York in 2020. So I'm really itching to go around and just see everyone, smush some yarn, things like that. And I'm, I'm having some major FOMO about Maryland Sheep and Wool because I would love to go to that, but it just, being smack dab in the center of the country is kind of hard when you want to like, hard, you know, when you want to do traveling and things, but it's like anywhere I want to go is going to be a decent plane ride in one direction or another. But yeah, I'm at the point where I'm rambling. So that's where I'm going to leave you. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe so we can hit that milestone and I can give away some yarn because my giveaway bin is overflowing at this point. Some of the things will be going out for the Slay All Day Cal, but I definitely have been looking forward to giving some stuff away here on the channel. Uh, hop on over to Instagram if you're active over there and give me a follow there. That's where I spend the majority of my time, let's be honest. And TikTok, Ugh, the time suck, that is TikTok, but here we are. Um, lots of activity happening over there as well. And so I'd love for you to check it out if that's what you're into, but happy knitting. I hope whatever you're working on is bringing you pleasure and joy. Uh, let me know in the comments what you are working on. What are you excited to cast on? Uh, what are your summer knitting plans? Because I would love to be enabled by all of you and to know uh, what you plan to work on. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.